A very good afternoon to all the students, resource person, and in-house faculty anchors of NIFT Mumbai campus. Trust all of you are keeping well and wishing you a very happy new year. So like last semester, this semester also we are going to have our GE mandatory and GE optional presentations. All of you have attended these presentations. So like last semester, this time also we have four GE mandatory and we are going to have 18 GE optional. So all these presentations you have attended, but a recap of these presentations will be done today. And this time we have introduced two new GE optional, which are corporate mannerism and mural designing. So apart from these two new GE optional, rest everything is as per the last semester. With this small words, I will now hand over to Professor Kavita Pathare, who will start with the Art of Living GE mandatory presentation. Over to Professor Kavita. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well and wish you all a very happy new year. Uh, I am the subject anchor for uh, Art of Living subject. Uh, the entire course would be taken from uh, the experts from Art of Living itself. So I'll just share a small presentation with everyone. I hope my screen is visible. Okay. Uh, Art of Living is a personality development program. It's a youth empowerment and skill workshop, which is offered by Art of Living uh, organization itself. So why do we need Art of Living or what are the characteristics of the youth? Okay. Usually they are very enthusiastic, very inquisitive, very energetic, very courageous to try new things very skillful and very, very, very creative, I should say that. And why do we need a youth empowerment program, skill-based program or YES plus? Because uh, in India, there are somewhere around five, six, six, seven, five, nine, six, nine people suffering from depression. That is somewhere around 4.5% of India's population. Then the suicide rate is the second case of uh, death in the age group of 18 to 29. And 85% of the habits are inculcated due to peer pressure. And every one in four youth today either smokes or drinks. Okay, So this is the reference that we've taken from World Health Organization report on India's mental health. Challenges that are faced by youth. I know due to, due to this pandemic, all of us are very, very, uh, it's very difficult for us to cope up because we're staying back at home and like, you know, we, we're not so much used to being confined into, uh, in our four walls. So the challenges now, what every one of us are facing is lack of ethics and morals, anger issues, substance abuse and addiction, lack of focus, there is depression and loneliness, and there's a lot of anxiety. I think uh, each one of us will agree on to these. Like, you know, most of us are kind of facing one of these challenges right now. Like, no, not per se for the youth itself, but even for the adults, each one of us is going through this. So the objective of the YES Plus program is to inculcate ethics and moral values in youth creating a platform for deserving youth to become job ready and create opportunities for a good livelihood to enhance the ability of the youth to handle stressful situations, to improve relationship between teachers and the students, to develop an attitude of sensitivity and sensibility towards their living environment, that is the hostel or the campuses where they are staying to create an opportunity for the youth to develop their interpersonal skills, bond, and other students to learn through teamwork. Because most of our activities or our assignments are all teamwork based. Unless and until we're not really 
uh, ready to work in team, it becomes very difficult for us to really go ahead and work in a team. So this really helps us to like, you know, have a good team building activity and exercise. So we are like uh, ready to work in teams to bring clarity of thoughts, which will give them innovative and creative ideas and help them in effective decision-making. So YES Plus module, what does it offer? It gives you life skill training, gives you group activities to develop interpersonal communication skills, helps you in time management and leadership training. There is yoga and pranayam. And all this always culminates into the Sudarshan Kriya. That's the key for like to keep us going and uh, uh, having a good uh, in tune with all the activities that we do. The benefits of the program, it improves your functioning of the brain, increases your concentration, adds more hour to your day, helps you appreciate life more, improves interpersonal skills, helps to manage emotions much better better decision making ability helps you to have a good night's sleep which all of us are lacking on enhances creativity and innovative uh, innovation increases immunity and helps fight di uh, diseases inculcates ethics and moral values and keeps you stress free so see there are and like you know not these are just a few of them but definitely when you enroll for this program you yourself will like you know have a lot of benefits and about the uh, art of living uh it was founded in 1981 by shri shri ravi shankar ji and uh, educational and humanitarian movement engages into stress management and service initiatives it operates globally in 155 countries and has touched the lives of over 370 million people. Over the last eight to 10 years, more than three lakh students have been benefited across the premium universities of the world. Humanitarian projects include conflict resolution, disaster and trauma relief, sustainable rural development, women empowerment, prisoner rehabilitation, environment sustainability, preserving tradition and bringing global cultures together. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Looking forward to have you guys enroll for this program. Thank you. Over to the next presenter. Thank you, Kavita ma'am. Um, uh, a very happy new year to all the students. Uh, I'm Shweta Rangnekar. I'm uh, the faculty anchor for critical thinking. Critical thinking, as they say, has been part of the Forbes uh, top 10 skills for the future working and we are very uh, lucky to have this particular course as a GE mandatory which enables us students to think beyond, be curious and ask and that in turn helps with their learning at NIF. So I'll introduce you to uh, Ms. Deepti, she's one of the faculty members who would be taking uh, GE mandatory critical thinking. Hi Deepti, can you please take over? Sure, thank you very much Shweta ma'am. And a very lovely afternoon to all of you. Trust you all are doing well, staying safe and staying at home. Uh, so, uh, Shweta, ma'am, I was about to say the same thing that it's a part of Forbes uh, top 10 skills, even LinkedIn top 20 skills to have. And it has been on the list in uh, 2019, 2020, 21 and even this year. OK, so uh, if you look at all the leaders, OK, uh, when le industries or when companies look at hiring people, one of the skills that they look for is a critical thinking skill. So without uh, spending much more time in discussing that, let's look at uh, what you're going to uh, learn in this course. So first of all, what is critical thinking? So critical thinking is your ability to think clearly and think rationally about what to do, what not to do, what to believe, what not to believe. In this time of overload of information where information is available from all the sides and every second you are getting one notification, one news update, and you are completely con uh, consumed uh, with social media, you need an ability to decide what is right for you, what to believe, what not to believe, and that's what critical thinking helps you do. So apart from that, 
why should you learn critical thinking so critical thinking boosts creativity so creativity is one of the skills that is demanded and that is a must have skill uh especially in our industry so it boosts your ability to think creatively in order to think creatively in order to be able to think and assess all your options what you need is curiosity so in critical thinking you will learn about how to get curious and how to solve problems also it is a multifaceted practice so it just not uh, it just does not focus on uh, how to think crit critically but how to evaluate situation how to be a creative thinker how to be a good observer and also how to come out of something where nothing grows which is your comfort zone uh when you are um able to think for yourself when you are able to decide for yourself you are independent and of course it's not just one course learning it's a skill for life and why do we say it's a skill for life is because as we speak there are around 114 crores people google searching on how to think there are around thousands of crores of people uh, asking a question to google on how to think out of the box there are around thousands of crores of people who are google searching uh, on how to come out of comfort zone yes so this and this is the reason why you must learn critical thinking so what would be the topics that would be covered in critical thinking well many yes first of all we will look at what critical thinking is and how the process works we then would learn what is knowledge and how to comprehend it what is information and how to comprehend that information we would look at decision making errors so how people decide incorrectly for themselves how they make wrong decisions and how to make right decisions we would look at problem solving because this is a part of our day to day existence we may may not face bigger problems every day but i'm sure we do face smaller challenges on day to day basis so the critical thinking helps you solve those problems also to recognize if something is really a problem or not we would also look at creative thinking because uh, we are in that field and it is a must also we would look at how you can encourage critical uh, creative thinking and how you can foster creative thinking in your work uh we will look at different uh ways of resolving conflict and what is conflict and how you can structure your argument so our we here at critical thinking teach you train you on understanding that arguments are not bad arguments are good if you put it across well if you put it across logically then arguments are a good way to communicate also how to negotiate everything is about negotiating uh negotiations you know from getting a good job offer getting a good client getting um you know your first raise to even negotiating with your parents on uh, you know whether to go for that outing or to get that iphone or not also we will look at reasoning logic decision making how to become a better thinker and a decision maker and we will look at commitment and evaluation so all in all why should you be a great thinker or a critical thinker and why should you take this subject is because uh it is one of the most desired skills everywhere you go wherever you go secondly uh if at all you're planning to start your own venture uh critical thinking and creative thinking are a must to have skills even when you proceed further in uh, your uh, academic course you will be taught design thinking and creative thinking so if you have done critical thinking it will definitely help you understand design thinking more clearly yeah and if you want to be an entrepreneur yes or if you want to set up something on your own this is 
a must have skill. So that's it from my side about critical thinking. I'll hand over uh, to Uday, sir, and he will talk about professional ethics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dipti, and uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, faculties as well as available uh, students over here. So, uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Now, I will be sharing with you about the topic of the about the subject that is professional ethics that we will be going to cover for this semester. So, just give me a moment. I will be sharing the slide with you. Sushmita ma'am. Hello. Sushmita ma'am, you can uh, start because sir is uh, having internet issue. Hi. Uh, so can we, um, uh, st uh, are we ready for something which is very interesting but surprisingly people um, get scared of the subject okay so this is sushmita das and i'm the anchor for the g mandatory subject indian art history and the uh, full name of the subject is indian history of art culture and design now, when we talk about this subject, normally people get uh, like, you know, a phobia about uh, about the subject because they think that it is the same old history subject which they have done in the school. But it is not so. Uh, it is uh, not so because we are not talking about chronological history with dates and lots of um lo lots of theory rather what we are going to do in this in this subject um, is that we are going to uh, look at indian art and indian culture and link them together like for example we are trying to see for this subject what all changes happened in Indian art, culture, and design? Like, I'll give you two, three examples so that you can um, understand that why this subject is so interesting, if I'm saying. So, we all know about the famous architectures of Bombay like CST, like Gateway of India. Uh, but do we know 
that why the characters are like that or for example we all know about the female famous mughal miniatures but do we know that who started this mughal school of miniatures and how did they get their character why the mughal miniatures are so in, are in such intricate details though they are so small so these are the interesting things which we are going to do in this subject i will in short i'm not going to present i'm going to give you the points I, i'm not going to make a ppt presentation i will just tell you in short the subject aims is to inculcate the ability to identify fundamentals of indian art culture and design and its creations this subject will definitely help you to synthesize the understanding of works of indian art culture and design in concurrent projects and in the interpretation of works of art and design topics which should be covered in this subject are understanding the indian concept of art from caves to temples religion and art mythology folklore and rural crafts influences on indian art and design 19th century indian shift of india and the shifting aesthetics of indian art which is a very very important part of indian art and craft 20th century india and 21st century in uh, century in indian art and design which is the era of communication the period in which we are living and also we are going to analyze the changing art scenario of indian art methodology of the subject would be lectures interactive sessions films visual aids self directed study and work experience uh, there are two things which are museum visits and visit to galleries which normally used to happen where during the um, offline studies but don't think that they are not they cannot happen there are lots of museums and galleries for which i we would be giving you links where if you register you can have virtual tours of the galleries and the museums and even better you can also have the tour of the international museums and galleries okay so uh, this is in short uh, about the subject now about the assessment there would be continuous assessment we would be on a daily basis asking you about what all have you understood we are going to ask you to maintain a learning diary there would be activity activity and presentation based assignment where you are going to do something like you know you might be asked to take a image which i have shown and talk about it all these things can be done there can be an um, activities would be based on understanding a topic and creating visual boards group discussions research and presentations on artworks report writing on contemporary exhibitions there are lots of online exhibitions which are happening many many actually innumerable so you can visit those online exhibitions and you can write about them you can you have to maintain a learning diary which is a must and art appreciation exercises have to be done for this subject so this is in short about the subject and the there are five faculties including me who are going to take the take this subject and in time you are going to get introduced to them when you select your groups so that's it from me uh, for now and um, so thank you and a very happy new year and wish you have a great semester this time thank you thank you very much sushmita madam and uh, again uh, extremely sorry for getting disconnected actually i was having some network issues so uh, i hope i am audible to you everyone yeah yeah we can hear you yes thank you sir. thank you thank you ketan sir thank you sushil sir so uh, this is with regards to the uh, program of professional ethics that we are going to conduct 
so uh, let me take you through the complete content of uh, of the program which we are going to conduct so a small description a small uh, introduction about myself so uh, i am a program manager as well as a banking and finance uh, trainer for itm group of institute that is uh, also located in khargar a few campus uh, to the left of nift and uh, other than that i do take care of uh, pan india training programs for our various clients so as far as connection with nift is concerned i am connected with nift from last 2 uh, to 3 years and uh, this is exclusively for the topic of uh, for the program of professional ethics so uh, it's very uh, different uh, feeling for uh, any person to understand about uh, what are the uh, what are, why is there any requirement of uh, maintaining ethics in our life or maintaining values and why do we maintain morals in our life so uh, as you can see that there are many examples of uh, how the uh, damages has been caused to the people to the organizations due to lack of ethics or or because of why people follow unethical practices so there is a very uh, you can say there is a, everyone badly needs to understand what are the various principles of ethics that has to be followed so whether it is in personal life or professional life and uh, at any given point of time in our life whether it is childhood whether it is teenage whether it is youth or it is mid age or it is an old age every point in time or in your life phase you need to follow certain set of principles if you want to survive as you want to maintain that integrity that honesty and that respect in your life so once you uh, are thorough with these kind of principles that are followed with your life and i could see that there is no problem as far as your complete life is concerned so to make this points of uh, further more clear as well as to make student more and more uh, uh, clear in their concept of how to look at their professional life how to look at their personal life how to maintain relationships how to maintain other balances like work life balance in your life we choose to keep you aware we choose to make you aware about this requirement as far as this professional ethics of program is concerned so let me take you through the concept of this particular subject and how we are going to benefit if you are appearing for this program so this is my short introduction i am uday rathod i will be conducting professional ethics for you it's a 28 hours program and we will be having three assessment in that and through which you will be assessed and uh, more than that what is the benefit that you are going to acquire from this product i will just take you through it so so this is just about a few training programs that we have conducted for other organizations again you can say at any given point of time even the organizations they require this particular topics it is not about colleges it is not about institutions it is not about schools it is about the highly you can say those organizations which are gone which are gone in last so many years but still they require this particular topics so we have conducted topics of professional ethics for organizations also so it is not restricted to colleges so now guys if you could see we many times we come across uh, uh, problems where we find it very difficult to take decisions and at many given point of time we see that people tend to take wrong decisions in their life due to which in the future they get they get disappointed and they feel as if that uh, what would have happened if i have not taken the decisions so just uh, to understand whether any particular decisions that i am taking right now whether it is a right decision or it is a wrong decision how it is going to affect me in my future how it is going to affect my relationship we need to understand certain laid down principles of ethics values and morals so there are very there are very social scientists in the past who had already agreed upon very very important points of ethics and uh, ethics and values you must be knowing about aristotle you must be knowing about plato also these people are called as the father of ethics okay so just want to make it, make a few points clear that there is a um, there are moments in the life when we are confused while taking decisions whether you should go for those decisions or you are not going to or you don't want to go for these decisions now as you can see that in many many sectors in the society or you can see in many sectors in the organizations also there is one particular issue that all the organizations or many part of the society is facing that is very prominent in the society that is gender inequality now these questions has to be answered again this is a part of discussion when we will be going for this particular professional ethics course so we will be discussing in depth about this particular issue and how do we overcome and uh, overcome this issue and what will be the outcome if we just uh, handle this issue in a way that it has to be handled that is through professionalism we will be we will be making you aware about the professional approach how to address this issues once you are uh, once you are working for any organization and you come across this issue secondly we will also be discussing about issues like sexual harassment what are the different laws of the government what are the different laws 
as well as the legal laws are concerned how do organizations approach these particular um, uh, kind of issues in the organizations and what are the ways to handle such such issues we will be discussing in depth about this also thirdly we will be discussing about environment also which is the much spoken about topics in today's world how it has impacted our earth and how it has impacted the lives of the people around us and what are the ways we need to identify so as to make a sustainable living in on this particular planet earth why because we know that there is no second earth for us right so the existing place where we are living we have to make it pollution free so this is also one of the part that we will be discussing in professional ethics secondly there is a very big issue that every country is facing and that is corruption everyone is aware about the level of the corruption that we are facing in this country so what needs to be done how the transparency has to be maintained what are the system that has to be followed and what are our inputs that will help us to make more transparent more integrate as well as putting us into a better better level of performance as well as efficiency so the best practice that has to be followed so as to eradicate corruption that is also a topic that we will be going to discuss other than that there is one more issue that is very deep rooted inside our system that is caste again that the second part has been played in the western world that is racism right so this is also one of the most important problem that today's country that is facing so we need to understand what are the roots of this problem how it has come and what are the different ways through which this particular problem can be erased so we will be going through this particular issue also and we will be trying out to find out ways different kind of ways through which we will be able to answer this question so this comes to, uh, this brings us to the end of this particular discussion of professional ethics so i am looking forward for to all of you for attending this session so that you will be becoming more responsible citizen giving more importance to integrity honesty and truthfulness rather than just running after fame and power this is these are certain qualities of a human being which will make him a better human being and that will make your future generation more reliable more trustworthy as well as more successful thank you very much this is from my side over to you to the second party thank you sir yes to stop sharing hi i'd uh, now like to invite uh, professor ketan he is joining us for the first time for the g man optional presentation and thank you for doing this in spite of you know your health condition thanks a lot so yeah over to you sir you are on mute yeah i'll just share the screen please just hold on Uh, is the screen visible? It's loading. Yeah. 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 Fine. So, a uh, very good afternoon to all of you all over here. I am Dr. Ketan Chande, and I have been working in the hospitality industry for a lot many years. My closest uh, connection with the fashion industry has been when I was teaching at Paul for a period of two and a half years. and i realize that in this this industry the way superb one but the topic which i conduct which is the corporate etiquette is something which is uh, required by everyone day in and day out whether you are in an smsc or you are in a big company or you are running your own business so we'll just look at what we are going to cover into this so people still care about social skills and manners yeah this is very finely to be noted by everyone even if they do not say so rules about which fork to use for a salad or not to talk with food in your mouth are examples of good manners and when we talk about etiquette takes the discussion about manners to a very high level so the manners and behavior that are expected within the workplace and it's a vital part of the productive work environment which you will realize once you hit the floor i'm quite sure that many of you have must have had an uh, experience through internship or something into the industry and you must have noticed this all the workplace cultures and expectations can vary between companies the basics of corporate etiquette can be used in almost every kind of workplace this is what i have noticed ever since in my last 32 years of work experience so the objectives of this course are going to be an effective networking 
making introductions, shaking hands suitably and appropriate use of business cards. I do not deny the fact that most of us know this, but somewhere or the other, are we doing it right might be a question mark. Even I have learned it on my way ever since working for Five Star Hotel still date and I still learn something new whenever the chance calls for it. You can dress applicably for various business occasions. Feel at ease when dining in business and formal situations. Feel assertive about corporate interaction in every situation and develop an, develop an extra edge to establish trust and credibility. These are the objectives of the course. What we will be covering in this course over the 28 hours which have been given to us would be like the business etiquette basics. We'll be testing your business etiquette. If we are online nowadays, we will be doing it through a quiz. If it was online, of course, it could be a pre-assignment and a role play. But we will not miss on a role play even in online days. We will surely work on that also. The handshake, the business card etiquette, your uh, the art of managing a small talk. Do you okay, remember I, names? Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt. If you're changing the slides, then it is not changing here. I am so sorry because uh, uh, I am changing the slides. Uh, uh, is it do I keep it small and then do it? Is it visible no, now? No, now? Now it changed. Yeah, I think then there's a problem when I'm uh, blowing it up on the screen that yeah. it's not changing. In which case, we have not missed much. I will share this PPT with you so that you can share it with the. No, uh, see, uh, it, this is getting recorded. So if you could just roll through the slides once more. Definitely, please. Yeah. Recorded. So this is where I was. And yeah. from here, I went to this introduction yes. that what is the introduction about this course? Then I went to the corporate etiquette, why it is important. These are the objectives. And this is where I was on the screen telling about the business, basic business etiquette, which we'll cover and test your business etiquette. If online through a quiz, if online pre-assignment and role play. And I said, we can do a role play even online. There wouldn't be much of a problem. Yes, definitely. There is a little bit of a difference when these sessions are conducted offline and online. Offlines have always had more impact, has been my observation. Then the handshake, the business card etiquette, the art of managing a small talk uh, as a corporate employee or any, even as an entrepreneur, you might have to give a small talk. And sometimes they are very good situations, like somebody's promotion is a very easy talk to give. But when somebody is leaving the company and going or there's a demise of someone, the talk becomes a little complicated. So we can work on these topics and how we can handle such situations. Then do we remember the names as soon as we are introduced to about four or five people and we just uh, leave the hand of a person after a handshake. Most of the time we forget the name of the person. So we will find out some keys how we can remember names. And this plays a very important role in the corporate setups. Making the great first impression, grooming etiquette as per the occasion, uh, business dining etiquette from basic to chopsticks. I mean, most of the time people do know certain basic uh, dining etiquettes, but we take them through everything possible lying on the table from the napkin till we teach them how to eat with chopsticks, email and telephone etiquette including WhatsApp added nowadays, social media etiquette, whether it is to be in Instagram, Facebook, or a professional networking site like LinkedIn, interacting with your coworkers, the interview etiquette, that means when you are an interviewee, and a tip for conducting interviews, when you are an interviewer, you'll be playing both the roles once you join a corporate within a span of a very short time. Then the meeting etiquette, including online meetings, employer etiquette. That means if you are an employer tomorrow starting your own boutique or your own factory or your own setup, you will also need certain type of etiquette to get the best out of your employees. Similarly, on the other hand, we teach employee the employee etiquettes. Then the desk etiquette, when we are working at a desk in a company, cubicle etiquette, that is when we are in a cubicle. Office lunch etiquette, that means when we go for an office lunch, maybe with our boss to a restaurant or even in the cafeteria. Office party etiquette, you'll be having a lot of parties and what are the etiquettes over there, which could even add like, you know, if it's a cocktail party, how to hold your wine glass. Office restroom etiquette, 
this is something which is not much spoken about but being being observed much about elevator etiquette when you're just in the elevator or calling for an elevator there are certain etiquettes which are required over there then we will take over some international business etiquette some prominent countries which we have business ties with like what happens in certain countries like an asian country like japan or china or an european country or an american uh, or america as a continent and the latest addition has been covid and post covid etiquette which will be required people are still working on it i started collecting information and we can share some information and uh, please this is not going to be a one way communication there'll be a lot of interaction with you all which i'll require because many people regarding etiquette have many ideas and we can share it on a common platform and learn from our peers also and the assessment will be based on a quiz of 40 questions mcq which will be answered in 40 minutes a video presentation of not more than 3 minutes on different etiquette we have learned along the journey and online role plays i think i'll conclude over here thank you so much thank you ketan thank you so much so now we have uh, benny yeah. once again oh, oh no sorry i think benny uh, could you just wait for a couple of minutes because i think janki also has to leave just take sure, sure. after janki is here yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jan, okay, we can start. Thank you, Kevin. We can talk. Okay, please. Bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, wishing you all a very happy New Year and a very educative New Year. Maybe two years uh, due to this pandemic, we saw a lot of. Uh, Uh, issues pertaining to education industries, but I think we can uh, get on through very well this time also with the online classes. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible and my slides are visible, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. The topic uh, covered will be understanding your intellectual property rights. Now, I would like to add that all the design laws, all the IPR rights, which we are going to study. in this topic basically uh it wouldn't be wrong if i would say that this is the heart of fashion industry today there is a need to protect our creations anything which is created or invented basically is your right you have a right and it needs to be protected so this topic is something very close to my heart and i feel uh your laws uh, pertaining to your intellect which you really uh, which is an intangible property as we all know needs to be protected and yes of course this will add a lot of value additions globally we can see massive brands uh, there are brand wars you can say and after a lot of competitions uh, when it comes to selling or marketing what matters is the designs aspect so it's not the value per se or other things but yeah how you package your designs how you brand it and so the creativity plays a very very major important role in bringing up the profits or the turnovers of a company so moving ahead with the topics uh, we will be covering just to give you a idea intellectual property is nothing but a creation of your mind which will refer to your ideas discoveries or any inventions made which needs to be commercially exploited money is the most important aspect of business in today's world without money or capital nothing can move on so when i talk of intellectual property rights it is a series of legal rights that provide protection for different types of inventions your designs created brand names trademark your any original creations these rights protect your creations from unfair use by others your competitors now what are the rights given by the government basically law protects you so there are different types of acts basically the trademarks the patents the gi geographical indications your industrial designs your copyrights these are meant basically made to protect the rights of the creator or the inventor now when i talk about trademarks when we're studying trademarks what does it mean it could be a word name symbol or 
device or any combination thereof adopted and used by a manufacturer to identify his goods and distinguish them from those manufactured or sold by other competitor brands. Moving to the no next topic, patents. Patent is an exclusive right granted for any inventions, which is a product or a process that provides a new and non-obvious way of doing something, or it offers a new and non-obvious technical solutions to a problem. Moving to industrial designs, when we call it, it could be simply designs, talks about the appearance or, or the whole or part of a product resulting from the features of it. It could be the lines, the contours, the colors, the shapes, textures, the materials of the product itself or its ornamentations. Your copyright, it is a legal term describing rights given to creators for their literary or artistic works. Now, what is the importance of IP in the fields of innovation? Why do you think IPR protection is necessary in today's world? As we can see, technologies are changing very rapidly. The product life cycle is becoming shorter. Investment on research and development productions, your marketing have become very high. Human resources have started possessing a lot of high skills, qualities. You can uh, make out from the developments which we are making globally. Further, the industry has become very, very competitive. So the brand needs to work hard moving to the role of intellectual property in the fashion industry, I would add on. Fashion has always been a part of our life since the inception and has exhibited a great role in depicting a symbolic social status. So we wearing branded clothes, footwear, accessories makes a lot of difference. It acts as in sources of massive employment and growth of various independent sectors, which includes your branding, merchandising, marketing, and so on. As the industry focuses on creativity and intellect of a person, it has become a ground for growth, profit and duplication also. The tremendous growth of the fashion industry has made designers and fashion houses realize the importance of the intellectual property. Now, this industry, which prides itself for its innovation and growth, seeks protection. Now, what are the infringements of rights? So as a creator, creating a designs of a product. There are a lot of uh, duplication as we can see. The various misuses of rights in a business environment could be competitors imitates your brand name and tries to gain a market share riding on your popularity. A competitor copies your designs, thus saving time and money for them. So this could be a huge loss for the original creator. A competitor hires your top scientist with the lure of money and thus gets a jump start on invention by many years. Again, saving a huge amount of money. Now, what could be the importance or the necessity of IPR? To provide incentive to the individuals for their new creations, providing due recognition and material rewards to the creators and inventors, ensuring the availability of genuine original products, to enhance competitiveness, to eliminate unfair practices. Now, what branch of law is intellectual property, if some may ask? So IP is a specialist area of property law that governs the ownership of creative property. The law encompasses a broad range of legal disciplines, which includes the law of torts, law of contracts, and competition laws. Now, intellectual property right refers to the legal rights given to the inventor or creator to protect his invention or creation for a certain period of time. So each and every act or the rights or the series of rights under IPR will be given protection by law, but for a limited period of time. So during our course, we'll be understanding each and every act thoroughly well We'll be understanding what laws are all about, what is civil laws, what is criminal law, a little bit of your franchising agreements, what are franchising, what is character merchandising. We'll be covering all these aspects. 
that's it for today thank you so much thank you janki benny thank you. you can start now sorry it got a little delayed benny so uh no that's perfect even i'm sorry uh, i got a little hi uh, can you all hear me yeah we can Uh, yeah so are the students as well here or it's just no, uh, it is just uh, us so it's a recording so the thing will be streamed for the students tomorrow okay okay yeah. so uh, i am the faculty member for uh, spanish language and this is my third year with nift uh, it's been a wonderful experience so i don't have a presentation uh, that i've made but uh, it's going to be very short uh um, so basically what i do is uh, i focus on grammar the verb conjugations prepositions and then i talk about spanish culture spanish civilization history um as well as uh, what the students can learn about the fashion industry in spain so i've added even that topic because that's connected uh, with the subjects uh, that are uh, that are being taught in nift uh it's an interesting language to learn because nowadays it is very important to learn uh, a second foreign language and spanish is considered to be one of the easiest to begin with um yeah so my strategy is very simple i try to make it interesting by uh providing them notes that are easy to understand as well as i play uh, songs and lyrics so that uh, you know they understand the concepts of grammar really easily rather than trying to rote the you know just to memorize them because it's after a certain point of time if you memorize the verb conjugation it really gets boring so i believe in um, you know making it more interesting uh, secondly there's a whatsapp group that uh, we make for every batch and we share a lot of things uh, slides notes as well as uh, links to uh, songs and the spanish series uh with regards to the assignments or the assessments uh, there going to be two assessments and the, the last one is going to be the the end term project um normally i keep it uh, or like really limited to whatever is done in the course so it's not going to be anything new uh and uh, i'm definitely there to help the students whenever they need me so the whatsapp group is definitely created for that purpose so in case if they have any doubts they can contact me and i'm there to help them and it's been interesting an interesting journey with nft because i've uh, got a chance to interact with uh, a lot of brilliant students with a lot of innovation i have seen their presentations the way the amount of uh, hard work they put in the sort of innovation they have the sort of uh, you know i would say the modern thinking and they have their own ideas towards learning a new language which is very interesting for me as well uh, because i've been in this profession since quite some time but uh, teaching in nft and interacting with the students uh, although the online platform is a completely new and exciting experience and challenging as well for me and uh, yeah that's it from my side i'm looking forward to meeting the new set of students and having a wonderful time with uh, the students as well as the other faculty members thank you very much and thank you for giving me this opportunity to teach uh, for this uh, semester as well thank you and have a wonderful thank year ahead thank you so much thank you Uh, Lippy, ma'am, should I go ahead? Yes, ma'am. Ah, ha, हमारा हो गया. You can start. Okay, okay. Is the uh, presentation visible? Yes, it is. thank you uh, so a very good afternoon to all uh, i am shankalina choudhury an in house faculty 
and me and Pallavi Rani, we both uh, take this subject called as Design Innovation for Sustainable Fashion. Uh, so this particular GE is a one-of-a-kind uh, general elective which NIFT is offering because this is in collaboration with United Nations Education Program. And the entire curriculum has been developed keeping, um, I mean, it has been reviewed by the United Nations Education Program and therefore in uh, coherence with their goals. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you here uh, have heard about this term sustainability or sustainable fashion, especially uh, during the pandemic, this particular word has, um, has you know, sort of uh, become, a, become a very, very regular word. But what exactly is sustainability? What exactly is sustainable fashion? And what as we, what as we at NIFT can uh, contribute towards the sustainable fashion? That is what we are looking at in this particular subject. Uh, so basically, um, the aim of the subject is to build awareness and to sensitize about fashion and sustainability in a broader sense. There are various terminologies which are involved in sustainable uh, in, in sustainability or sustainable fashion, which will be discussed in this particular uh, subject and how innovation can play a pivotal role. So whether we belong to uh, the design domain, the management domain or technology domain, we can all contribute because now the fashion industry is looking towards being a sustainable industry and we all can contribute both uh, as uh, industrial um, experts and also as consumers. So that is one of the main things which we are looking at. Apart from this, the other main important thing which we are looking at is that India has traditionally been a very, very sustainable country. So this is also an effort from our side to bring out the traditional practices which were existing in India and to, uh, and to make everybody aware about it. So there is a lot of discussion which will happen um, in, in, these, um, in these domains. And um, uh, Pallavi, uh, you can move ahead with uh, discussing about the, uh, the various things which we'll be discussing in class. Uh, Shankalina, ma'am, please do the slideshow. Uh, actually, if I'm doing the slideshow, uh, the, the slides... Uh, you have your present option. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, but the slides sometimes do not move in Google Meet. Uh, I uh, I'm changing the slides. Is it visible? Yes, As it is. Okay. Okay. Yes. Am I audible? Right. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so as Sankhlina had mentioned about the aim of this subject, so there are various things, uh, various topics which we are going to cover in this subject. That is the introduction to sustainable fashion innovation. So where broadly we are going to cover the triple bottom line, that is the TBL, then 3P, then 4R, eco design, green design, ethical design, and uh, we'll broadly talk about the life cycle analysis and cradle to cradle methods. So uh, we'll uh, do lots of discussion about this kind of topics and uh, lots of case study will be discussed during the session. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Yes, and a second topic is that the understanding sustainability by revisiting age old indigenous uh, practices as she mentioned about the uh, traditional practices in terms of sustainability. So uh, we, we, we will go through uh, the assignment and learning through the assignment that taking the interview of the uh, elderly and will uh, learn about traditional practices from our forefathers practices and whatever uh, uh, the, the uh, craft practices are there and the living art traditions are there. So those things will be discussed here. Next slide, please. Uh, and we will be also talking about the sustainable design principle for innovation, uh, where biomimicry, revival of the craft practices, design for disassembly, design for longevity, lean manufacturing, Kaizen, smart textile will be discussed. So these are the terms which we are going to uh, 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 we, we are going to uh, 
apply and the uh, whatever the method has been taught in this terms that we are going to practice also through the assignments so uh, this will be our approach for this subject and uh, now you can continue santina okay uh, so uh, like pallavi ma'am has mentioned all the topics which we will be discussing in the class the assignments will be based on those topics itself so in the first assignment we will be uh, we will be having like an understanding that what exactly is the correlation between fashion sustainability and innovation how can we bring all the three together and that will be presented by the students in the form of an infographic apart from that uh, we will also have uh, in depth interviews uh, with the elderly to understand the sustainable practices that were prevalent in india and it is this is actually a very interesting assignment because we uh, have students from all across india and when we discuss about the various um, various uh, traditions which are there it becomes a very um, very you know uh, very nice um, class and where we learn about the various traditional practices which are prevalent all across india in the second assignment uh, this is more of uh, more of a case study based assignment because in order to understand the triple bottom line various case studies will be taken up uh, from various brands which have actually adopted uh, the sustainable model and the other part also is very interesting where we do uh, an analysis of ourselves as to how sustainable we are and also this is like a road map which we create as to how we can become sustainable uh, in the future both in our personal as well as professional lives and the final assignment is actually a group assignment where uh, as groups uh, students identify an area that requires some kind of an intervention some kind of an innovation that can be brought about uh, keeping the sustainability aspect in mind so this is what we are broadly going to uh, discuss in this subject this is a very very interesting subject and and it is uh, obviously the need of the hour um, so yes looking forward to having uh, students on board Um, I think we can move ahead, and uh, Sophie, uh, Sophie, ma'am is already there with us. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. If you could, please. Can I go ahead? Yes. Yes. Please. A very good afternoon to every one of you today. Uh, it's my name is Sophia Criado, and I have done three semesters with um, NIFT for the English and the Literature class. it's really been a uh, a privilege and a pleasure uh, teaching these young students and uh, thank you for this opportunity once again and let me go ahead with my presentation can i share my will i be able to yes yes i think please do let me know if you are uh, able to see it Sure, ma'am. Yes. No, it's not visible. So how do I get it? Uh, you have to uh, share the screen. Uh, I have tried to. Give me a second. No? Okay. Uh, you can keep the tab open from before. and once you share screen it will or it will show you uh, your presentation so you can uh, select that and then share the screen uh i'm not able to share the screen here is there something yeah. to do with then probably you can just explain um and uh... Uh, madam if you can share to me then i will uh, share from my side then next person will talk then after how can that, i how can i share it madam uh, Beside your hand, there is present now option. Then select the entire screen. Yeah, I've uh, okay. And uh, select the object. And yes, okay. Click on share. Okay, so I am already on the screen right now. Now, uh, ma'am, we are not able to see. <laughs> so probably you can mail it to me i will share it for you uh, in the meantime the next person can yes. present yes sir <laughs> is that okay uh, yes sir, yes sir? yes yes ma'am yes okay okay great 
I'll just send it to you. Sure, ma'am. Uh, sir, then can I continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Sangeeta Das Chaudhary, and I'm your anchor faculty for the subject GE Optional French. Now, French is a very beautiful and sweet subject, and at the same time, very closely related to fashion. To deliver this subject, we have Mr. Shanti Rajagopal, who is having more than 13 years of experience in this subject. She got into this subject because of her daughter's academic requirement, but finally she took it on as a career. She completed her course from Allianz Process, and after that she has been actively associated with this subject. Her journey um, uh, with NIFT Mumbai started uh, from the time when general electives were introduced in NIFT, and she is also associated with two other activity centers in Seawoods. Now I'll uh, ask ma'am to continue with her presentation. Uh, over to you, ma'am. I am Thank you so much, Sangeeta. Sharing the screen. Thank you so much, Sangeeta, for lovely words. And uh, Boju Tulmond, uh, this is a hi from Shanti to everybody. So, Sangeeta, you're... Uh, uh, yes, ma'am, just, yeah. just a sec. So it has been a very good journey with a young uh, fashion designers and... Uh, is this screen I, visible? Yeah, yeah. So I have enjoyed the journey and uh, hoping to enjoy it in the future too. And thanks for the opportunity extended to me this semester too. So this is a bonjour that is hi from me to everybody. Yeah, Sangeeta, next one. Please do the slideshow, madam. Sir, I have done the slideshow. And I went to the next slide. Is it visible? No, Sangeeta. Okay. It means then doing slideshow, it... Now, is it visible? No, Sangeeta. Madam, please share again. Yes, sir. Just a sec. Now, sir, is it visible? Yeah. Now it's visible. So why French? The benefits of learning new language, it enhances your ability to multitask and it improves your memory. And moreover, I can say that it's a stress buster. So by uh, learning a language, it is, uh, you can learn a lot and it is, uh, and why French? Next uh, slide, please. Yeah, why French? So French is very easy to pick up. Why I say is uh, it uh, shares the same set of alphabets as English. As we are all well versed with all the English alphabets, it's very easy for us to write the words in French. So we need not spend uh, I mean extra time to learn the characters of French. So as we know it before. And this uh, is the most, uh, I mean, second largest spoken language internationally. And it is fun, fun to learn this language. And uh, you open yourself uh, to the world. And it is uh, when you travel to a French uh, speaking country, uh, you can travel with confidence as you know the language. And of course, you're all inclined towards uh, music. So when you know the meaning and listen to a music, it uh, touches your heart and mind. And um, yeah, as I said, uh, only certain letters will, uh, the pronunciation of certain letters uh, uh, will be different um, in alphabets. Otherwise, it is same as the characters in English. And uh, being in this uh, fashion profession, 
uh, you uh, come across lots of uh, brands and by knowing the language you can give a good pronunciation for that uh, brands like uh, chanel uh, louis vuitton then uh, pierre cardin lacoste so all these things and next uh, slide uh, yeah so without our knowledge we have been using lots of uh, words uh, which we were using all these days we didn't know that it's all uh, i mean the same as french so english and french uh, they share lots of common words uh, for example it is uh, a restaurant only the pronunciation differs but the spelling and everything is the same restaurant rsvp you would have uh, seen in all the invitations rsvp that is reserve a silver plate then she haute couture deja vu chauffeur driven car you have uh, come across this word chauffeur is the driver and boutique then cafeteria then critique so so on and on uh, so many uh, grand so all this uh, adi ad, adia so all these words without your knowledge only you have been using all these uh, words so these are all uh, french words yeah sangita next yeah coming to the summary of the course uh, we will be starting with the alphabets and uh, its pronunciation and i'll be dealing with uh, how uh, the combination of letters will be pronounced for uh, to make your you comfortable with uh, pronouncing any word or sentences and we'll be doing lots of conjugations conjugations mean solving of verbs so once you are clear with the conjugations it is very easy for you to make the sent for frame the sentences and uh, make any uh, paragraph uh, writing any paragraph and you will be once the course is done uh, or uh, during the course of action you will be in a position to present yourself that is presente vous and you will be in a position to describe about your friends relatives then family the house you stay the place you visited so everything will be uh, you can uh, Uh, do in the course of action and uh, if you are uh, mean planning to travel to any french speaking country how to deal in the um, uh, counters like uh, when you visit a uh, uh, epicerie that is the grocery shop then patisserie then uh, boulangerie that is the bakery shop so how you can deal with those uh, set of people uh, you can uh, see in this dialogues and as you all know it will be it is divided into three assessments the uh, Uh, two assessments and the final one is the uh, end term assessment so yeah and uh, this is uh, this is it about the language and hope um, you will enjoy the session uh, this time too merci merci is thank you over see you and bon journe and a bientot see you soon so waiting to see you all on 24th the day uh, the class is going to start so uh, eagerly waiting to see the young uh, fashion designers once again oh wow merci thank you sangeeta thank you ma'am um okay sophi ma'am uh, i'll just uh, share the screen and you can uh, present yes yes thank you so much anglena mention um uh, my screen visible yes it is so uh, let's begin uh, as we all know that english is considered a global language uh, you can go on to the next no no just uh, i think just wait yeah yeah that's fine uh, many speak the language fluently as it's their mother tongue whereas in many of the countries um say for example uk canada australia us it is the first language so it is also an official lang language in the un so by this you can understand that english is a universal language which is very very important um as english is a primary source i'm still on the earlier one ashankli no okay, okay sorry yeah that's fine uh, as english is a primary source of communication all around the world when we have a good command over the language we can communicate well and we are able to share our thoughts and ideas very confidently Uh, can we go on to the next slide shanklina yeah thank you okay the importance of the english language why is it important 
because it is a global and a predominant language for the acad for academics. It's also considered a business language for multinational companies all over the world. It is a high priority for long term competitiveness and success. So it's basically when you want to, of course, when you are trying to get successful in, in your life, English is, is one of the main important parts which you need to be well versed with. It has also become a gateway to thoughts and cultures of different countries. Let's go on to the next one. What are the benefits of enhancing your English language skills? Uh, of course, we all do know the language well, but if we try to improve ourselves on learning the language better, better uh, the benefits out of that is an overall improvement of knowledge, awareness, and understanding about the language. Fluency in the language with effect to the vocabulary and grammar, which will create a lasting impression. Creating better opportunities and career prospects for yourself. You would have more confidence at interviews, social gatherings, business conferences, etc. Increasing, it also increases your cognitive skills, that's your brain power, and increases your problem solving skills. And it has an added advantage to your abilities in digital literacy. Now let's go on to um, the syllabus, which is going to be um, through the whole course, which is the four basic skills. We have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So the receptive skills that you receive in is listening and reading, and the productive, which is the one which you, the, la the language which you take in, which is in written and spoken, is your productive, which is speaking and writing. Can we go on to the next? As for as for uh, the start, the main the main uh, language skill which is the most important is listening uh, in communication. And through the course, we would be doing audiovisual activities, videos, interactive sessions, which will help you enhance your listening skills. Let's go on to the next, please. In speaking skills, you will learn to communicate uh, effect effectively. Uh, through different dialects, we'd be also learning different dialects of different countries. Um, there'll be in, you would try to, we would try to learn a little more fluency in the language uh, through expanding your vocabulary, through basic and advanced grammar, and improving your pronunciations, which is going to be a part of speaking skills. Then we go on to body language, which is the different types of nonverbal communication, which um, has gestures and expressions which is said without saying a word so that's what we're going to learn also which is going to be a part of the syllabus let's go on to the next reading skills in reading skills we would go on to comprehension vocabulary phonetics which will be a part of the syllabus and finally we have writing skills which are compositions essay writing, letter writing, creative writing. Uh, we'll also do basic and advanced grammar, which is the eight parts of speech. And we'd have articles, prepositions, tenses, which is also going to be uh, used to improve your fluency in the language. Uh, the activities during the program could be group discussions, role play, impromptu speeches, interactive activities, comprehension, as I said earlier, composition and essay writing, different styles of creative writing, and of course, audio and visual activities, which are going to be fun filled activities, which you'll probably have a lot of, it's going to be more interesting and exciting for you to learn. Uh, and finally, we have the evaluations, which are going to be two assessments, which is for 30 marks, and the end term jury, which is around, which is 40 marks. So that's all for me. And looking forward to the new batch of 2022. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sophie, ma'am, for joining us and taking us through your presentation. Thank uh, you. Yes. Um, I think we can move on. Uh, Samreen, uh, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. OK, thank you. Uh, so Samreen, you can uh, probably take us through your presentation now. OK, OK. So very good afternoon to everyone. 
Konnichiwa Minna-san. I'm Samrain. Um, and uh, basically, uh, uh, I want to say a lot. <laughs> but given time, I will be um, saying Japanese is really very much interesting language. And while learning a new language, you learn a quite a uh, thing like uh, their culture and fashion and everything. And um, so during the course of action, learning and teaching period, I would be uh, in details, I would be telling you about the Japanese and how the writing systems and the basic and the grammar pattern I would be teaching you. So here is the writing patterns, hiragana, katakana and kanji. So in the yellow, it's a hiragana and the green one is the katakana, which is basically a for uh, like uh, our foreign like uh, words. And in red is the kanji. Okay. So uh, the writing pattern we would be learning the first. Apart from that, from the syllabus, we would be covering up the basic structure, the greetings, alphabet, vocabularies, and in the tenses also. Um, and your in this process, you will you will be able to introduce yourself. Uh, uh, in a basic and guide someone also in a location and express also. We would be learning the sentence structure also and with the honorary form like in the polite way, casual form, all would be covered up in the basic portion. Um, there would be, uh, I would be providing you the materials also, the rear, uh, like uh, books and like through pictures and animation also. Um, through all this process, uh, we would be learning a lot. Uh, not only uh, we would be learning, there would be some quite activity also on uh, uh, in the process, like um, uh, like names uh, in Japanese, uh, numbers in Japanese, and how to like uh, uh, replace few words and like uh, uh, Hindi names into like uh, Japanese. We would be like uh, going for that fun activity also in the course period. And uh, there are lots of uh, greetings in the survival places in Japanese. So we would be covering up all that. And so uh, apart from that, uh, we would be learning, uh, uh, le learning not only learning, uh, reading also, and um, writing also. So here it is. So this is the kanji. So numbers kanji and the basic kanji we would be learning. So and how the kanji has been formed, the uh, the variation of it that I would be uh, providing in detail. And um, here are the sum uh, of the main kanji which we, I would be showing to you now. So days of the week, calendars and everything. So basically, um, in this course period, we would be learning a lot and uh, we would be having uh, fun activities too, as I said. And with the past two se semester, I would have fun uh, teaching uh, with the uh, students and I hope so. Uh, uh, I would be enjoying him further also teaching the students. Thank you, Samrin. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, you to the psychology uh, faculty, Ms. Janki Bhant. Ms. Janki, are you there? Yes, hi, Pallabi. Hi. Thank you so much. I'll be sharing my screen now. Okay, is my presentation visible? Yes, yes. it is. Yeah, okay. thank you. Yeah. So uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Janki Band, and I'll be uh, the faculty for GE Elective Psychology. So um, I hope everybody is healthy and doing fine. Let me take you all through the um, course content. 
So we'll be talking about introduction to psychology, what psychology is, the history of psychology, the different schools of psychology. And the basic idea is uh, that, you know, a lot of people have a lot of misconception about what psychology as a subject is. Uh, and um, a lot of pop psychology or a lot of WhatsApp and social media is to do uh, uh, with this because uh, there are a lot of uh, unchecked facts that go around on the internet and based on that people think that you know they know a lot about psychology uh, but uh, unfortunately it's not true so we are going to uh, bust that myth and we are going to talk about what psychology actually is and how it developed as a science um, we'll be talking about different theories of psychological development uh, we're going to talk about adolescent uh, and the different issues which are very um very typical at that stage procrastination and time management social psychology that is the interdependence of society on an individual the different types of addictions and its management cognition and intelligence Stress management, what are the different stressors that people uh, face in their day-to-day -day life and how they can deal with it better. And abnormal psychology, that are uh, that is what are the various psychological disorders and their management. A basic introduction to uh, the psychological disorders and how you can recognize them or how you can uh, help somebody or uh, anyone you know. Uh, who have this kind of issue and what can be done about it. So their treatment plans, their management. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of PPTs, videos, discussions, and group activities in our class. And uh, the learning material, which would be, you know, the handouts and worksheets. Uh, I've tried my best to convert everything, all the resource material into soft copies and Google Forms. And I'll be sharing them uh, with you at the end of each class. And assessments would be, um, there'll be a midterm uh, assessment, which will be 30 marks, end term assessment, again, 30 marks. And there'll be a final submission or a final jury that will be for the 40 marks. And uh, the assessment will be continuous. That is, it will be based on your overall, part, overall participation in the classroom, uh, your attendance, the MCQs that will be there after each class or subjective questionnaires. Uh, and all these will be shared with you on Google Forms so that it becomes easier uh, to, you know, submit them. Uh, and I can keep a track of them. So um, thank you. That was all uh, that I had to present if anybody has any questions for me. Okay. Um, so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing you all in my class. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janki. Uh, Vanessa, you can come in. Yes, sir, you can continue. Okay. Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am sharing my presentation. Uh, Nitin sir, can you share my presentation? Yeah, I just mailed you. Nitin service sir. Uh, just a moment sir. Yeah, on your email. Okay.
थैंक यू सर हाय आई एम विनेश टापरे फ्रॉम फैशन कम्युनिकेशन डिपार्टमेंट दिस इज द न्यू सब्जेक्ट म्यूरल डिजाइन व्हिच इज इंट्रोड्यूस फॉर द जी ऑप्शनल म्यूरल डिजाइन मींस आर्ट को एग्जीक्यूटेड ऑन वॉल एंड सीलिंग any large permanent surface is called mural so the kind of the uh, uh, we are doing this work it will be a related wall ya maybe ceiling ya any of the surface we understand the different uh, different places of the and areas of the different areas and places of the murals sir please next so uh, what you you achieve in this subject so first one introduction yeah it's a history of mural which is indian and western uh, the traditional then second which is a study of traditional medium and techniques like traditional means tempera fresco mosaic and many more you can explore it as well as contemporary material like cephorex you may be seeing this kind of the material uh, mu- uh, the kind of the murals in this material metal fiberglass list of material you can explain in it mural design means storytelling on the pictorial surface so the conceptualization is most important on the pictorial surface that you learn it uh, is next you will learn technical aspect and proportion which is scale up and scale down also the multi production process so that's the scaling technique you will learn the most important the next aspect you can see the space understanding it is important aspect why because here we understand the relief and semi relief surface levels and the uh, understanding of the transformation of 2d to 3d space also the next uh, as you see color and light to develop aesthetics and create a interactive mural design also you can explore experiment on the different uh, kind of the contemporary uh, materials you can see this is some reference visual i put it here and uh, i think you also familiar with that when we will be visiting indian airports some I mean, other kind of that uh, the wall murals you can see so this is the just for a reference so the kind of the references again will you uh, said next slide please yeah this is also the another example of the murals yeah please next yeah this is again uh, from with the reserve bank of india it is exhibited in the large size and it is in the as i said c4x material so that's a huge uh, in the uh, the panel with the storytelling as you are aware about the when we'll be talking about the reserve bank of india's and their the journey and this is again which is the uh, uh, the mural which is in the mosaic tiles you can see the closer the small small pieces it join so this kind of the execution but over here in this course we have to develop the designing with the understanding of the kind of the material experimentation please next now what to how to submit that is also the uh, that uh, important question from your side for the evaluation process so it's a evaluation as we are aware about it the first assignment based on the documentation on traditional contemporary mural design second assignment will be exploration of concept experimentation in different material as much as and technique that is our second assignment in continuation the final assignment uh, will you please go back sir yeah the final assignment will be the presentation of mural design means you have to execute you have to be create a mural design on any of the surface ya prototype something and its process work you have to do document so that's a final evaluation assignment please next yeah so this is the uh, one of the slide which i explained it's a new subject and it's a really uh, helpful uh, you will be enjoy i'm sure uh, but still when we, if you want to explore uh, the concept of the mural so you can refer please take a snapshot so that will be helpful to refer this uh, books and you get more understanding before you selecting your uh, this g option thank you thank you
Thank you, sir. So, if you all done, can I go ahead for the next presentation? Am yes. I audible? Yeah, yes. thank you, sir. Hello, uh, good evening. My name is Raghu, Raghu Thomas. Uh, I'm going to be a next uh, GE faculty for your photography, GE photography. So, I'm going to show you something about uh, 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 a presentation about why we have to study photography, okay? So this is my uh, little presentation. I'm not going to waste your uh, no, no, a number of images to be taken. So please go ahead with this presentation. So uh, eventually I'm not watching you, so please buzz me when I'm uh, not audible or anything, because I hope sure. everything is audible. Okay, okay. So people think that... Yeah, thank you so much for confirmation, sir. <laughs> because it's like the broadcasting from somewhere else. So it's a technical glitches. So I want to clarify from that. Thank you so much for that clarification. And uh, this is that why to study photography. So everybody knows that, sir, I know how to run. So why to study photography? Why to why to why to run to run uh, techniques to that? So everybody holding the smart camera and everybody buying a DSL camera and everything. Like the technology is evolving. And everything is going so further faster way so we are achieving every uh, detailed pictures so people think that photography is like you know not to study or uh, needs practice so as well as practice also as well as uh, study also so how many languages do you know like people people tend to speak so many languages that is like hindi english telugu malayalam tamil something like that but if you know one language the apple language like you know uh, um, a visual language. When you see the visual here, the green apple, then you can easily relate it to that. This is an apple. So that way, this is what the visual language. It is not about anything else. So whatever you want to present it, whatever you want to understand from the uh, 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 external uh, forces, like you know, landscape or any person or any concepts or visualization. So you want to make it one language, right? Like the visual form that's called as a visual language. So for that, what do you need? Just a little bit of your camera, your imagination. So what you see here is like a marble texture or somewhat color painting picture. But if you deeply understand this, this is something like this is taken from the aerial photography space like you know something like taken from the hubble telescope or something like you know uh, uh, jupiter's uh, big uh, ring tordonos ring something like that this was a visualization coming out from the student which we which she is uh, uh, taken in the g assignment so next what we are what we going to do in this g sessions this is like you know your idea needs to visualize. So you have so many ideas. Like, you know, people have to capture people and to explore so many things. But you need to have some techniques to be fulfilled. Those are like, why photography for everyone? So is that, is that for me? So photography is for really for me? So that we are going to uh, solve. Because everybody is feeling that I'm a photographer. I can do that. I can do that. But no, this is for few people that we can... Uh, enhance their creativity, enhance their techniques that we can go further to something else. 
so how visual communication is most important so this is most important that people from the creative field they want to show something they want to present something the creative visual communication is most important because because you want to carry your garments to something to present to somewhere else so they don't want to disturb their um, quality of the textures the quality of this complete uh, idea so you need this photo has to be shoot properly so for that also is required what is the use of images so use of the images of your ideas people generally write books people generally write uh, notes little notes this is your notes like you know whatever idea you come you will show into the visual form understanding the image so if it is done then in the future like you know whatever images you what what images say why the images are shooting the what the pictures are saying to you so images and moving images in social media what they are saying what is really in that content is that a photographic technique is there a uh, socio economical techniques like you know uh, the ideas they are doing they are simply a uh, magic of uh, some visuals that way next practical shooting so with this uh, theoretical knowledge then after we are going to practice so many technicalities like knowing the technicality of capturing how to capture images what is the best position to capture images what is the techniques to uh, uh, give the view angle for this image that is one we want to do capturing images with compositions we going to learn so many compositions that we are going to uh, that we are going to uh, apply in your ideas like you know, which composition is going to suitable for your compositions that way then then again practical understanding of image next visual process of photography composition study of light smart camera versus dsl camera so many people think that why sir dsl camera is better than my smart camera some people think that smart cameras are very easy to use so that those confusions are there we are going to clarify those confusions understanding content so what can, kind of content you will create what content going to be visualized what content going to be pictureized people think that everything going to be captured no nothing like that so we only capture limitation of some images like some props like you know something is there we have to can capture only nature you have but you cannot create your own whatever is there you can capture but you cannot cap con make content with your own that is a limitation what kind of content you are going to make with the photograph which is visual form or video form that we are going to uh, clarify which content is used for images yeah that that was said so this is my milestone that and that was associated with ge uh, sorry nift so i am doing this since 2019 so offline offline ho gaya then pandemic happened so corona corona uske baad delta delta now i am playing omicron omicron so these are our milestones the this on, online uh, classes we have achieved almost 2 to 250 students 250 students going to uh, or um, learn photography through online so these are some of the images by students please have a look at it so then we'll see So we are going to talk about little briefs also, like you no know, light gradient before that still life. So I'm going to give you some briefs. You have to study on that. So in the lockdown time, we don't have any much ideas to explore. So we use the utensils, home utensils, to get some images to practice. Yeah, uh, that's it. My presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, 
be uh, you were so kind to be pay for the patience so please stop it yeah thank you sir thank you sir नितिन सर क्या स्टार्ट कर देते हैं यस सर सर सौरभ सर आर यू रेडी यस आई एम रेडी या गुड 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 इवनिंग ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस एवरीवन टू मिस्टर सौरभ बारवे Geo optional chess. Now I would like to hand over to Mr. Savran sir. Hello, sir, please. Yes. So chess basically is a game of battle between two armies. There are two armies. One is white, one is black. So it's basically a fighting between them. So I have been teaching in NIP for uh, last three years from before Corona. And this is a basically a practice game. Daily we will be playing uh, games. there is an app where we can play competitions so daily we have to play the games there is also theory to teach so basically the first step that i will be teaching is the rules of the game the game of chess was basically invented in india and then it went to europe and then europe uh, made it very interesting by changing the rules so first thing i will be doing is i will be telling you the rules of this game the modern rules of the game uh, currently there is a world chess federation called as pide so from that rules we will be playing daily so that is the first thing to do the rules of the game because there are six different players and each and every player has a different movement in chess so we will be studying those movements <clears throat> then this is a game which will improve your focus concentration and this is a game of intelligence so uh, this was a very popular game in europe but uh, after the cold war started between russia and america so russia tried to prove that they are more intelligent than the us so they started promoting it into the schools they made it a compulsory subject and also they encouraged the chess competitions in russia so after 1950 before 1950 all the world champions were usually from europe but after 1950 this game was completely dominated by russia so all the world champions after that you must have heard about kasparov karpov kramnik so everyone all the world champions were from russia so of course russia only <laughs> went ahead of the, uh, america in chess but not in other fields so the first thing is rules then there is also theory theory part is very less in chess it's more about practicing daily we have to play the games so i will just share the screen and show you how the interactive board is I hope you can see the screen. So this is how the interactive board is, right? Where I can also move the pieces, and the students can also move the pieces. So here is where I will be teaching you. <clears throat> so each and every piece has different movements, and there are different types of checkmates. The most important thing in chess in chess is. to do a checkmate that is to kill the king to win the game of course you have to kill the other pieces also but the most important thing is to kill the king so there are different types of checkmates to win the game then th there are also different tricks or strategies how to kill the opponent's pieces so this all theory we will be teaching i will be teaching you so daily we will have half hour first theory class then one to two hours we will be playing games with each other and then again analysis of the game what mistakes you are doing what needs to be improved which steps you are following or not so there are different steps like in the starting you have to take out the pawns then take out the big pieces then there are some special moves like castling to make our own king safe in the corner and then finally to attack and do a checkmate on the opponent so these are all the things which come into theory but main is practice uh, about the assignments there will be competition and whoever plays well whoever wins more games will get more marks right those who won't be able to attend those competitions 
we will also have a theory test for them so it will be a fun experience so that's it from my side thank you sir thank you very much smita ma'am you can continue good evening everybody i hope you all can hear me yes ma'am okay i am here to uh, introduce to you the uh, general elective optional that is yoga techniques I've been teaching yoga in net for the past four years now. <clears throat> A brief introduction about myself. I'll just share my slide. okay now this is a brief introduction about myself um, i have been practicing yoga for almost 20 years now self practice and uh, teaching for about 9 uh, years i started off by doing a diploma in yogic science went on to do another diploma in yogic therapy then i did my masters in yoga shastra and then i am already also certified uh, from the ministry of ayush the level 3 certification has been granted so that's a brief introduction about myself now let's talk about yoga give me a minute okay now what does yoga mean yoga is a sanskrit word which means union the sanskrit word is yuj which means the union of uh, the body mind and the soul these three things come together and that is called yoga where you have a union of these three aspects together for us yoga means a uh, union of our body and our mind a journey inwards where we try to experience life to its fullest by being more aware of us inward uh, most of the time what we do is our lives are more outward oriented where we are more aware of what is happening around us the surroundings the, the sounds that we hear or uh, whatever we feel outside for people around us things around us and the nature around us in yoga what happens is we are taking the journey inwards where we are more aware about ourselves first physically and then going more inwards towards our breath our existence and to the origin from where we've come so we are connecting more towards ourselves in the journey of yoga so in short that is the meaning of yoga now yoga for all of us um, it's like we all know yoga is something that is originated in india itself we have uh, we are very proud to be saying that it, a, a concept of yoga was originated in india it's come down from the sages our ancient sages who practiced yoga for their well being and for their spiritual growth so this was the way how they went into a higher level of consciousness through the practice of yoga later on when this was passed on this uh, uh, knowledge was passed on to us for our daily existence the common man how we picked it up now when we picked it up what we picked up more from it was for our well being how do we get health from yoga that was more for us so what are we getting out of yoga we looked at yoga for our well being of the health for the well being mental well being and the physical well being so when we look at mental well being and the physical well being we looked at asanas we looked at the breathing practices as the pranayams we looked at uh, when we said mental well being we looked at meditation as well as the spiritual part of it where we go into deeper into meditation and try to be more uh, one with ourselves now when we look at asanas what are asanas doing for us at a physical level they improve the flexibility of our body 
it improves the structure of your body it gives you more uh, better posture the range of motion the muscle strength all this improves because of the practice of the physical asanas that we do now other part of the benefits that we have internally is it reduces your stress it brings down your heart rate it improves your health overall by uh, decreasing all the day to day ailments that you go through you can get over all these by the simple practices of day to day yoga that you do it also brings about a mental well being where your it brightens up your mood it increases your energy levels and it increases your alertness as well now this alertness also can be interpreted by making you a better human being uh living life to the fullest by having more awareness about your body your mental health and thereby connecting you better socially around you so that is the benefit of doing asanas and the breathing practices and the pranayamic practices along with the meditation meditation also <coughs> improves your well being uh as far as your uh psych psychological health is concerned So meditation also takes you more deeper inside that is the goal of doing asanas and pranayam so that you can get into a meditative state a meditative state is one where we try to connect with ourselves like i said that yoga is something which is uh, an inward journey so meditation is something where we try to connect with ourselves and try to be one with our inner self so our goal of doing asanas and pranayam is to have a, a stronger physical body and a strong immune system inside so that we can get into a meditative state and be in that meditative state for a long time like we all know that it is not very easy for all of us to sit in one place for a long time close our eyes and try to focus on something because we uh, in our day to day life we become so fast paced and restless in our lives that it's very difficult for all of us to sit in one place and try to focus on something so yoga teaches you exactly that how to be in a state of calm and a composed mind where it's very easy to connect with yourselves in work where decisions can be taken in a very practical way where you don't have to hurry up and do things where you can be at yourself in a calm and composed way that is something that yoga is going to teach you now what are you going to learn in all these sessions that we have we have about 10 sessions we have about 10 sessions in this curriculum So now in this 10 sessions I am going to be teaching you a branch of yoga that is called hatha yoga. Now what is hatha yoga? Hatha yoga hatha uh, ideally means two aspects that's the sun and the moon or you can call yin and yang everything has two aspects. So hatha yoga ideally means uh, connecting with yourself through your physical being. So this branch of yoga will be taught in these 10 sessions. uh these this is more going to be uh practical sessions rather than theoretical sessions so your practical will be almost 70% and your theory will be just 30% so it's going to be practical sessions where i am going to be teaching you uh all the basic asanas pranayam meditation and these sessions are going to be covered physically that's going to have all practical sessions and end of these practical sessions i will be giving the notes so that you can go through about whatever has happened in the class you can just go through that and if you have doubts you can check back with the notes uh these sessions are going to be covered in a period of 10 sessions so these 10 sessions in between these 10 sessions we have three assessments as well like you know it's going to be 100 marks for the overall 10 sessions so they're going to be divided into three assessments these assessments are going to be practical as well as vivas and these assessments are going to be divided through this the 10 sessions in equal intervals to be given so this was a brief of what is going to be done in this uh, yoga techniques thank you anna punna ma'am you can continue yes good evening uh, good evening i am annapurna gunturu um, taking mu carnatic music vocals okay uh, i am doing my uh, phd just going to complete uh, uh, going to give my thesis submit so i am this in, uh, in this profession since 20 years uh, 
So I am actually music is a very vast subject. Cannot be learned in means it is uh, difficult for teacher to teach in ten sessions. But I'm I did the syllabus. I prepared syllabus like this uh, in for ten sessions. In this, first I'm going to music. Why we want to learn music? Music is very uh, useful at all times. See. It is uh, from uh, uh, and everyone can enjoy even a uh, um, layman and scholar, if young or uh, old. Okay, there is no language for music, language and age bar for music. Everyone can uh, le learn. See what is music? The sound. Okay, the uh, the recognition of sound is music. So in this, I divided, uh, I divided fundamentals, basics, uh, five basics chapters, uh, and I will teach you uh, the fundamentals and uh, the rhythm means tal, how the rhythm goes uh, uh, with music and uh, the rhythm uh, music and the voice culture, how to develop voice culture. Those who are learning uh, fundamental for first time, they will have some knowledge. And those who already have knowledge, they will have some vocal uh, vocal exercises, voice culture, etc. OK, uh, this actually this improves concentration. Actually, music is like multitasking. You have to maintain rhythm. You have to buy uh, by heart the so uh, lyrics, you have to buy heart the songs. And the concentration improves very well learning music. OK. Uh, there are many benefits and uh, here I divided, I am teaching both practical and theory because theory is also very important. In every class I will teach, uh, means I divided half of like practical and theory. Um, marks will be also like that only, but in the final more concentration uh, assessment, more concentration on the practical, uh, given importance for practical uh, assess, uh, assignments, okay. so. Uh, I will teach in uh, I will teach some bhajans and some uh, notes for us. Uh, first, I will teach the basics, means fundamental saptaswaras. What are uh, these saptaswaras? What are the little introduction about ragas and introduction about tal, okay, and rhythm. How the accompaniments will work? How uh, singer will sing along with the accompaniments? All with go uh, all. Uh, how the coordination between the singer and the accompaniments goes? Okay. So, uh, 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 what I want to say, see, offline or uh, online, it doesn't make any difference for music, okay? Uh, because one to uh, in this also one to one interaction, I give more one to one interaction interaction because I have to listen everyone voice and I will pay more attention for the for, uh, those who don't have means those who doesn't have any. Uh, basics knowledge okay means uh, others can easy those who are having knowledge they can get uh, how to uh, tips like how to improve their voice culture how to ex uh, uh, exercise improve their voice by exercises doing exercises vocal exercises okay and uh, so the fun, mainly the theory will also be there and practical also be there. Okay. Uh, so now I'm not going to tell uh, how the syllabus is divided and all. Uh, those who are, means it, those who are uh, joining, uh, I'm for them means and in the classes I will tell. Okay. Uh, the technical terms, what are the technical terms used, um, how this music is useful for the, in our daily life, okay, from, see, from the uh, old man uh, to uh, if, even an uh, infant also, he immediately, he reacts for the music, okay, like this, uh, music is uh, every, I mean, uh, improves your concentration you uh, uh, means if uh, psychological disorders you can means more relaxation it is useful for at any time you can learn and age also uh, no every time any time you can enjoy and mostly in this uh, now in our day uh, day to day life in our fast uh, uh, running um, uh, time uh, it is very useful for relaxation music is very useful okay so uh, I hope 
um, those who are joining they will enjoy the classes uh, will meet soon i enjoyed the last uh, um, semesters five semesters i completed and you know, i enjoyed them uh, with those batches uh, hope we'll meet soon thank you thank you thank you thank you nuna ma'am thank you welcome Uh, which box are you can continue? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought nobody can hear me. Uh, well, my name is Satish Deshmukh. I'm an international entertainer, trainer, educator, and world famous master illusionist, mentalist, uh, corporate magician. I have spent my almost 50 years of my life performing magic everywhere. I have given shows almost in 81 countries, and uh, uh, I met uh, more than uh, 40 to uh, 41 prime ministers and presidents of various countries through this art. And the same art uh, I'm going to teach to a NIFT student since last three years. And uh, uh, in this uh, course, uh, I'm covering impromptu magic, conjuring, close-up magic, mentalism, stage magic, large-scale illusions, engineering uh, in magic, designing illusions, stand-up magic, comedy magic, escape, methods, script, technical aspects of all stage, light, sound, and performances, as well as presentation skill, body loading, and creativity and uniqueness of your performances. There are many, many, many divisions in magic art, and uh, but uh, uh, we have already completed seventh batches. Uh, if you want to know what magic is exactly, I would also uh, I would also like to show you something right now. I want somebody to come on screen right now. Anybody. This is a demonstration of mentalism, which you are going to learn in my classes. Who is there? Tell me name, anybody. Are you there? Anybody from the faculties? Professors, assistant professors, associate professors, anybody? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I need only one person. Tell me your name. Nitin Sarve. Uh, Nitin Sarve, sir. I'm going to write something on this blank paper. Can you see a blank paper in my hand? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm going. To, I have a pencil in my hand. I'm writing through this pencil right now in front of you. My camera is absolutely on my hands, on my pad, and I shall write in English. Okay. 
I have already written something on the paper. Now pencil, I shall throw it. And absolutely, Nitin sir, what number you have on your mind? Tell me. Camera is in front of exactly on my pad. 88. 88. Nitin sir, 88. You have said 88. Believe me, you can read it very carefully what I had written. Read it loudly, Nitin sir. Nitin sir will tell and us 88 number. So this is a demonstration of mental magic. I can read your mind. I can understand your thoughts. I can understand uh, your face. I can understand your body language. And I have done this art. I have used this art for crime detection, which you can also use students if you learn this technique from me. And I'm very happy and privileged to be given these lectures to NIFT first time in the whole world. And NIFT is the only organization in the whole world who has started this subject for 100 marks first time, believe me, and first of its kind. You will never learn all these techniques anywhere in any university, any college, any institute, which you will learn in this course, especially NIFT's Making Sense of Magic and Illusion by Satish Deshmukh. So I'm very happy to teach my eighth batch. You will be participating in the eighth batch, believe me. Seventh batches we have completed. And uh, Nitin sir, are you there still? Yes, sir. Nitin sir, do you have any two num two digit number apart from 88? Apart from 88, do you have any other number in your mind about 30? Chalo, go ahead. Yes, sir. What number you have on your mind? Tell everyone. 21. 21. Believe me, sir, I have written something on the paper, on the pad, right here, before you visited here. And believe me, what I have written, I shall show you. Is there 21 I have written on the board? Can you see the board? Can you see the board? And can you see 21 number over there? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Nitinji, you will be surprised, you will be shocked to know that if I add these three, three four numbers, 1 plus 11 plus 5 plus 4 is 21. 8 plus 1, 9, 1 plus 8, 9 plus 10 plus 2 yeah. is 21. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. 7 plus 3 plus 6 is 21. 7 plus 2 plus 3 plus 9 is 21. I know one faculty from you is thinking about horizontal. 1 plus 1 plus 12 plus 7 yes, is 21. Yes, 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 11 yes. plus 8 plus 0 plus 2 is 21. 5 plus 10 plus 3 plus 3 is 21. 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9 is 21. Believe me, somebody, somebody is thinking diagonally. And believe me, 1 plus 8 plus 3 plus 9 is also 21. This way also 21, 7 plus 0 plus 8, 10 plus 4 is 21. And Nitinji, are you there still? Yes, sir. If you, if you add circle, central number is also 21. 8 plus 10 plus 3 is 21. If you add these four corners, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is also 21. Not only that, Nitinji, you'll be surprised to know any four circle, if you add, they are all 21. This is called Mathematic Magic, which you will learn in our courses. And uh, I would like to happy. join your session once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I so, attended only first session. Not After that, I can't uh, attend because of my uh, other works. <laughs> <laughs> Nitinji, I am also interested to learn a lot of things from Lyft. But I do not get time myself because there are photography is so beautiful. Oh my God, I'm crazy for photography. And I could not learn photography properly in my whole life. Then there are some, uh, I, I, I have given shows in 81 countries as a celebrity. And I'm the highest paid illusionist in Asia. I charge 1.5 CR, 2 CR, oh my God. But when I teach to my students in NIST, I make magic. And I always tell all the people, all the students, all the faculties that life itself is magic. And we have to experience this magic through our classes, through our courses, through our degree, diploma, and through our career. So thank you very much. 
I hope. And what a beautiful time! You see, you started at exactly five ten, and I'm finishing at five twenty. Thank you very much, guys. I'm waiting for you to learn lot of magic, fun, 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 nothing but fun, which you will carry forever in your life. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Alpha ma'am, please. Good evening, sir. Hello, everyone. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Thank you so much, sir. I'll just I'll just put on I'll share my presentation, sir. Just give me a second. So, is my presentation visible, sir? Yes, ma'am. But please do the slideshow. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. I am Professor Dr. Alpha, and the subject that we are dealing with is socio-cultural anthropology. Okay, yes, there are three words to it or three parts to it. One is social, the second aspect is cultural, and third one being anthropology. Please don't get scared by the terminology or the jargons that we are using out here. It's a very simple subject. Uh, you must be wondering why Christmas. Uh, Ma'am is still not out of Christmas. Yes, we just celebrated festivities. My entire home was decorated. We had a beautiful crib. And uh, during this particular time, we, after Christmas, we had something called as the New Year. Okay, And New Year again, festivities went on. And during the entire season, one thing which remained common and uh, which, which was still there um, is, is this. Okay, This is... Uh, this is called as the art of gifting. So we keep gifting things to people. Uh, we keep giving out things to people. And this is something which is very, very common. And this is something which is which actually happens all the time during Christmas. And all the other festivities that we have, be it Christmas, New Year. But even though all this, all this is true, and even though we may agree to so many things, that yes, Christmas happens and New Year happens and um, gifting and everything happens. There is there is something which uh, there's something which uh, could be okay. There could be which could disturb a lot of people. I I love receiving gifts, but someone like Sheldon, I don't know if if you all follow the Big Bang Theory, but someone like Sheldon would not like receiving gifts. Okay, why is it so? Okay, let's let's have a look. At, at something really special, a small video for you. Okay, and we'll come back. I'm just sharing the video link with y'all, and I'm just gonna play it up here. I hope y'all can see it and hear it. Okay, well, thank you for that. But I got your letter to your silly neighbor gifts, so I'll just put them under my tree. The way. You bought you me a present? present? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Why would you do such a thing? I don't, I don't know. know. It's Christmas? No, oh, honey. But I know you think you're being generous, but the foundation of gift giving is reciprocity. But you haven't given me a gift. You've given me an obligation. Don't feel bad, Penny. It's a classic rookie mistake. My first Hanukkah with Sheldon, he yelled at me for eight nights. <laughs> Me anything in return? Well, of course I do. The essence of the custom is that I now have to go out and purchase for you a gift of commensurate value and representing the same perceived level of friendship as that represented by the gift you've given me. Well, it's no wonder suicide rates skyrocket this time of year. Okay, you know what? Forget it. I'm not giving you a present. No, it's too late. I see it. That elf sticker says to Sheldon. The, the die has been cast. The moving finger has writ. Hannibal has crossed the Alps. I know it's funny when it's not happening to us. Sheldon, I am very, very sorry. You no, know, no, I brought this on myself by being such an endearing and important part of your life. I'm going to need a ride to the mall. It's happening to us. I put my nine five. Yes. So even a simple act of yours that is giving a gift to someone might mean so much of obligation, might mean so much of trouble for someone. So with every action that you take, you have to be so, so, so careful in the corporate world or wherever you are. Okay. With this thing in mind, let's quickly move back to our presentation where we were discussing uh, what is a gift? Gift is nothing but, as Marcellus has put in, 
there's no such thing as a true gift if there's something always it's never selfless we always expect something in return okay from the other person and this is this is the essence of gifting so uh my subject which is socio cultural anthropology deals with social sciences humanity sociology uh psychology uh, it it deals with a lot of things at the same time okay so here we are we start off with diversity diversity starts with simple things even your food okay some might prefer bread some might prefer roti naan you love whatever from whichever region you come in from your preferences but at the end of the day you have a plethora to choose from and what you would like is upon your own personal choice okay now what are the topics that we cover i usually love discussing topics in class few of the topics that we have discussed and usually discuss uh starting with eon mask which is the space uh tourism the buzzword these days but not just this okay we also discuss uh, something called as the gap or the difference between the mindset of rich poor and how does that affect economy yes you heard it right in the subject of socio cultural anthropology we also discuss economics not just economics but also environment is also covered up here where we have a look at planet earth and how can we save it with our own uh, ways in our own uh, style of doing things topics like bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and how how they are taking over with the world we also have a little discussion on korean drama you know the newer things a newer series which are coming in and uh, the trends which are being seen in the newer generation uh we also have discussions on numerous topics like the lgbtq community like how do we incorporate them how are they with us and how do we support them in every way possible we don't forget our history no matter what okay so things like world war are not forgotten and they always remain with us we learn from our mistakes we learn from uh things which went on wrong there from the invention of the wheel to the smallest invention which made everything possible in the modern day here we are discussing in the current subject which is socio cultural anthropology which is the study of humanity all the aspects related to humans not just history not just science uh, not just culture but everything together so here we study the social patterns the practices which are prevalent in our society so the syllabus that we'll be covering we cover uh, introduction to socio cultural anthropology uh, the theory is in socio cultural anthropology as i said uh, history is never forgotten and theories are never forgotten what is the concept of culture kinship relationships that we associate ourselves with marriage family and our setup gender ethnicity race all of this together uh, are called as is, is what we are going to study as an entire package uh, in the subject of socio cultural anthropology so this was a very short uh, introduction about the subject which is socio cultural anthropology and i dr alpha uh, in case you all have any questions uh, i have shared my email id with you in case you have any questions please do connect and i'll be happy to answer and happy to help you in whichever way possible so this is uh, me thank you thank you for your patient listening and uh, now i would uh, like sir to take over sir ma'am that was all from my end nitin sir sir ma'am Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. I'm done with my presentation, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Bharat sir, you can continue. Uh, 
Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Ah, uh, good evening, everyone. Am I audible to uh, you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. you are audible. Hello. Um, I'm a digital marketing expert, and last two sessions, I have conducted. And in digital marketing, ka jaise, uh, uh, आज के टाइम में जो डिजिटल मार्केटिंग है जैसे मेरे को बताने इंपॉर्टेंस बताने की जरूरत नहीं लगती है कि सबको पता है कि डिजिटल मार्केटिंग आज के टाइम में है क्या है ठीक है ना ईच एंड एवरी वन नोज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ डिजिटल मार्केटिंग सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग हो गया एस हो गया आपका या आपका गूगल एडवर्टीजमेंट हो गया या फिर कहीं पर भी कुछ भी हो रहा है सोशल प्रजेंस है या कंप्यूटराइज डिजिटल होता है वो जो ट्रेडिशनल मार्केटिंग था वो सारा अब उसका स्ट्रेटेजी था वो चेंज होता हुआ आज डिजिटल मार्केटिंग पर आ गया है जो ट्रेडिशनल मार्केटिंग है सच एज जैसे न्यूज़पेपर एडवर्टीजमेंट हो गया पैम्पलेट्स हो गए आपके मैगजीन एडवर्टीजमेंट हो गया वो सारा क्या था वो पहले के टाइम में उस टाइम पर क्या होता था कि जैसे कोई हमारे पास में डिजिटल गेजेट्स नहीं थे सच एज मोबाइल हमारे कंप्यूटर्स इंटरनेट ये नहीं था तो उस टाइम पर वो सारा वर्क होता था और उस टाइम के हिसाब से वो सही भी था ठीक है ना बट जैसे ही इंटरनेट इंटरनेट हमारे साथ सभी लोगों की लाइफ में एंटर हुआ उस टाइम से उस टाइम पीरियड से ही जो ओवरऑल चेंजेस आ गए हैं उसके साथ में मार्केटिंग के उसमें भी चेंजेस हो गए हैं ठीक ट्रेडिशनल मार्केटिंग मैं ये नहीं कहता कि ट्रेडिशनल मार्केटिंग आज के टाइम में नहीं होती है ट्रेडिशनल मार्केटिंग भी होती है वो भी अपना एक इम्पोर्टेंस रखती है मार्केट में बट सैमल्टेनियसली हम देखें तो डिजिटल मार्केटिंग का आज मार्केट कैप है वो डे बाय डे बढ़ता ही जा रहा है आप देखेंगे कि वहाँ पर पहले ट्रेडिशनल जो मार्केटिंग में जो आपका कॉस्टिंग होता था वो बहुत ही ज़्यादा होता था ठीक है न और उसका हमारे पास में कोई प्रॉपर ट्रैकिंग नहीं होती थी ठीक है ना जस्ट लाइक अगर मैं कोई पेपर में कोई एडवर्टीजमेंट देता हूँ ठीक है ना आज जनरल अगर मैं पेपर में किसी भी एक लोकल पेपर में भी एड देता हूँ तो एक एडवर्टीजमेंट का टेन टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड रुपीज पर एडवर्टीजमेंट होता है ठीक बट उसमें मैं डिसाइड नहीं कर सकता कि जो मेरा एडवर्टीजमेंट है वो किसको शो होगा ठीक है ना मैंने तो ठीक है एक लोकल एक रीजन में डिसाइड कर सकता हूं कि यहां पर मेरा एडवर्टीजमेंट शो होना चाहिए ठीक है ना बट उसका मैं कोई डिसाइड नहीं कर सकता हूं कि जो मेरे प्रोडक्ट है उसके जिनइन बायर्स कौन होंगे ठीक है ना या फिर मेरा कोई प्रोडक्ट है जो स्पेसिफिक किसी जेंडर को टारगेट करता है या स्पेसिफिक किसी ऑडियंस की रेंज को टारगेट करता है बच्चों के लिए है या एडल्ट के लिए है तो उन सबको हम टारगेट नहीं कर सकते और उसी के साथ में क्या है कि कॉस्टिंग बहुत ज्यादा होता है ठीक तो ये सारी प्रॉब्लम्स आ रही थी तो जब इंटरनेट आया और सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग्स आए गूगल एडवर्टीजमेंट्स हुए गूगल एड्स हुआ तो उन सब के साथ में हम क्या कर सकते हैं इन सारी चीजों को और कम कर सकते हैं और यहाँ पे हम बजट जो सबसे ज्यादा किसी भी मार्केटिंग में मेजर रोल प्ले करता है कि बजट कितना है आपका सबसे पहले हम ये कहते हैं कि मार्केटिंग को प्ले करता है तो वो क्या होता है कि एक ही क्वेश्चन होता है आपका बजट कितना है ठीक तो डिजिटल मार्केटिंग के साथ में आप इवन सौ रुपए हंड्रेड रुपीज के साथ में आप अपना डिजिटल मार्केटिंग कैंपेन रन कर सकते हैं और उसको ट्रैकिंग कर सकते हैं कि जो मेरा एडवर्टीजमेंट रन हुआ था वो प्रॉपर जैसे मेरा कोई ऐसा ब्रांड का प्रोडक्ट था जो ओनली सपोज जिस जेंडर शू किसी का था वुमन शूज थे तो वो उनको ही टारगेट करना है तो मैं स्पेसिफिक उनको टारगेट कर सकता हूँ कि मैं जेंडर चूज कर सकता हूँ कि ये फीमेल ब्रांड है फीमेल के लिए है स्पेसिफिक किसी यूथ के लिए है तो मैं एक एज रेंज सेलेक्ट कर सकता हूँ स्पेसिफिक पिन कोड वाइज उनको टारगेट कर सकता हूँ कि इन रेंज में इनको दिखेगा ठीक जैसे ही वो म्यूचुअल इंटरेस्ट म्यूचुअल इंटरेस्ट मीन उनका और अपना जो सामने का जो एडवर्टाइजर है और जो यूजर है उन दोनों का जो इंटरेस्ट जब मैच होता है तो उसको वो एड डिलीवर होना शुरू हो जाते हैं ठीक दूसरा इसके दूसरा पार्ट होता है जैसे आप गूगल पे कुछ भी सर्च करते हैं आज के टाइम में ठीक है ना सभी लोग क्या होता है कि आज कुछ भी मेरे को परचेज करना है या इवन मेरे को आज शाम को किसी रेस्टोरेंट में जाना है या फिर मेरे को कोई 
वाटर प्योरीफायर परचेज करना हो कुछ भी ठीक है ना तो हम क्या करते हैं सबसे पहले जाते हैं गूगल को ओपन करते हैं गूगल पे जाके हम सर्च करते हैं कि बेस्ट रेस्टोरेंट इन सिटी बेस्ट रेस्टोरेंट इन मुंबई इवन कुछ भी हो या कोई भी प्रोडक्ट हमको लेना हो तो उस पर हम देखते हैं कि ठीक है टॉप थ्री लिस्टिंग्स में आपके बिजनेस लिस्टिंग्स आती हैं और वहां पर आपको सारी साइट शो होना शुरू हो जाती है एज अ जनरल यूजर एज अ जनरल यूजर क्या सोचता है कि जो गूगल ने आपको रिजल्ट डिलीवर किया है ठीक है ना वो बेस्ट है उसके पीछे की स्ट्रेटेजी उनको पता नहीं है कि इसको यहाँ पे शो होने का पीछे का रीजन क्या है ठीक है ना जैसे गूगल एडवर्टीजमेंट रन हो रहे होते हैं जिनके आगे एडी करके एक साइन होता है जो पेड एडवर्टीजमेंट होते हैं पर क्लिक उनका पे करते हैं सामने वाली पार्टी जो भी रन कर रही होती है ठीक तो वो जो भी पोजिशन वो अपना होल्ड करती है पेमेंट करती है उसको बट जनरल यूजर को पता नहीं होता कि ये एडवर्टीजमेंट है तो उसको देखता है कि ये टॉप पर आ रहा है उसको रिजल्ट ज्यादा डिलीवर होते हैं ट्रैफिक ज्यादा होता है उससे क्या होता है उसके ट्रैफिक ज्यादा डिलीवर होने पर उसके सेल्स में इंक्रीजमेंट इंक्रीज होता है वैसे ही ऑर्गेनिक होता है आप वेबसाइट का पीछे एस करते हैं एस करने पर क्या होता है कि उसका पूरा साइट का ऑर्गेनिक रिच जो ऑर्गेनिक ट्राफिक है वो इंक्रीज होता है और उसका जो गूगल रैंकिंग है वो धीरे धीरे इंक्रीज होता है तो वैसे जैसे कोई सर्च करता है तो आपकी वेबसाइट का लिंक वहां पे शो होता है वेबसाइट का एड्रेस शो होता है और उसके ऊपर ट्रैफिक ज्यादा आता है सिंपल सा एक फंडा होता है मार्केटिंग का जो दिखता है वो दिखता है ठीक है ना तो उसी तरह से क्या है कि जो आपका लिंक और आपकी जो प्रेजेंस है मार्केट में शो होना शुरू होती है चाहे वो डिजिटल मार्केटिंग आपका सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग के थ्रू हो रही हो या आप एस के थ्रू कर रहे हो या गूगल एडवर्टीजमेंट्स के थ्रू कर रहे हो कहीं पर भी आपका जो प्रेजेंस है वो सामने शो हो रहा है उनको सामने जितना आपका लिंक आपका बिजनेस का कोई भी पोस्ट हुआ या फिर कोई आर्टिकल हुआ वो सब जितना लोगों को दिखेगा उतना ही आपका वहां पर ट्रैफिक आएगा और उसी से ही आपका कन्वर्जेशन रेट इंक्रीज होता है ठीक उसके साथ में हम उसको फनल्स क्रिएट कर सकते हैं ठीक तो ये सारे जो फंडामेंटल्स हैं हम इनको आने वाले जो पूरे हैं कोर्स हैं उसमें हम एक वन बाय वन हम जो उसके सोशल मीडिया मार्केटिंग के जो मेजर प्लेटफॉर्म्स हैं फेसबुक हो गया ट्विटर हो गया इंस्टाग्राम हो गया टेस्ट लिंकड इन यूट्यूब इन सबको हम उसमें देखेंगे फिर वेबसाइट का जैसे वेबसाइट को कैसे बिल्ड किया जाता है जनरल डोमेन क्या होता है पोस्टिंग क्या होता है उसका वेबसाइट डिजाइन कैसे होता है ब्लॉग्स आर्टिकल कैसे सबमिट होते हैं ठीक फिर उसके साथ में हम देखेंगे गूगल एडवर्टीजमेंट्स कैसे होते हैं उनका एस कैसे किया जाता है उनकी रैंकिंग को कैसे इंप्रूव किया जाता है जैसे गूगल के कुछ टूल्स होते हैं जैसे वेब मास्टर कंसोल उसको कोई भी साइट होती है उसको अपने गूगल को सर्च इंजन को कैसे सबमिट किया जाता है ठीक गूगल एनालिटिक्स जिसके थ्रू आप अपने सारा वेबसाइट का ट्रैफिक को एनालिस कर सकते हैं गूगल मैप तो इन सारी चीजों को हम आगे वाले जो कोर्स है उसमें हम पूरा स्टडी करेंगे और डीपली उनको हम देखेंगे कि उनको कैसे वर्क कर रहे हैं कि सर्च इंजन कैसे वर्क करता है आपका जैसे कोई लिंक सबमिट कर रहे हैं तो उनमें उसका सर्च इंजन उसको कैसे ट्रीट करता है उनकी स्पाइडर्स हैं वो कैसे ट्रीट करते हैं आपका जो कंटेंट है उसको कितना क्वांटिटी में हम उसको फिल करना चाहिए और मेटा टैक्स और जो टाइटल टैक्स होते हैं उन सब के बारे में हम डिटेल में आगे हम बात करेंगे तो ये सारा हम पूरा एक कोर्स है जो डिजिटल मार्केटिंग इसमें हम पूरा ये स्टडी करने वाले हैं हेलो हेलो यस सर हेलो थैंक यू सर तन्मय सर यू कैन आने के बाद
hello everyone i hope i'm audible yes uh, uh, today i'm going to explain you about uh, this particular subject called finance for non finance executives uh, the subject was introduced just 2 years before in the list of g subjects uh, because we realized that there is a huge need for uh, this kind of information to students who are not from the finance background uh, because most of you wanted to start your own venture or uh, manufacturing uh, setup or etc uh, you might be very good designer you might have a very good production knowledge and you might create excellent products and uh, you wanted to sell those things but what if you are not aware about how to manage your business okay so uh, that's why we have introduced uh, this topic and the few content of this topics basically help you to explain <clears throat> what exactly uh, is business about and how you have to understand various financial terms in that so uh, whether you want to start any kind of retail shop or you want to set up a manufacturing setup what is more important is what are the cost that you are going to incur so in this curriculum we'll see uh, which are different types of cost uh how the cost behaves in a certain manner with respect to what and at the end we try to calculate the total cost required to open a store or total cost to set up a factory okay so this is one of the important factor because depending upon the cost you can actually decide the the pricing of your product okay that's the first uh, point second is uh, uh, after understanding the cost from where you are going to raise those uh, funds okay, because it's not so easy that uh, now the whole setup is there manufacturing setup or retail store is there you need sufficient funds for that so which are different sources of funds that you are also going to study uh, it might be venture capitalists it might be angel investors it might be a banks etc so how you are going to approach them uh, how much is the interest or how much is the return that you are going to pay to them so all those comparison will be taken care in this uh, few sessions uh, along with that there are other financial terms which you must know uh, with respect to balance sheet with respect to profit and loss statement because these are very much important for a non finance guys so it the whole subject revolves around giving the basic understanding about all these terms so that you will not face any challenges in understanding uh, your business uh, transactions Uh, along with that uh, it will also help you to analyze the own financial performance of your company uh, it will help you to understand what is the gross profit of a company what is the net profit of the company how the taxation is going to impact your business so there are various schemes by the government they provide a lot of incentives there are taxation schemes so how those schemes are going to help you as a entrepreneur that will also help you to uh, come to some kind of understanding about the finance so these are the basic uh, point that we are going to discuss in this particular subject uh, some of the features of this subject is that uh, we focus only on to the basics of it we are not uh, going to teach you how to become a ca uh, that is not possible so it's only a basic understanding of the financial terms uh, second is uh, it's mostly of a demonstration of a particular concept in a classroom and not a very hard uh, numericals so it's not a, a pure numerical subjects it's basically uh, we'll explain you through various excel sheet uh, through a case study that how you actually calculate the financial performance of a company again uh, the assignment are not individual is a group assignments so four people five people can sit together brainstorm and then decide which is the best uh, possible solution which will help the company financially uh also a lot of emphasis given on to excel sheet calculations and not on the pen and paper and because we are working on to the case studies so is those cases will be shared with you beforehand so you can go through those case study come up with the uh, solutions and then discuss in the classroom so overall uh, this subject is based for those people who are really interested in starting their own uh who, those who wants to uh, check the financial performance of their company as well as other company okay so that will help you a lot so that's from my side uh, thank you everyone
थैंक यू तनमय सर आकाश सर यू कैन कंटिन्यू ओके थैंक यू हाय गाइस माय नेम इज आकाश आई एम गोना ट्राई एंड कीप इट सुपर शॉर्ट एंड क्विक आई प्रिसाइसली कांट सी द नंबर ऑफ पीपल हु आर व्यूइंग बट दिस इज अ क्विक प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन हाउ द थिएटर क्लासेस आर गोइंग टू बी um usually when we would have these classes it started as offline classes so we would actually have it in an ift but as time goes here we are on our zoom sessions and zoom classes trying to explore theater um we basically begin with the idea of storytelling first we understand the the key aspects of what it is to tell a story what it is to build a story from scratch uh we fundamentally dig deep into each of your personal memories and we try and have a story um by the end of the session the first two three sessions we would have a rough idea of what a story structure is all about what beginning middle end is what a three act structure is uh which makes all you everybody in this session program and figure out a way to write or or understand and make their own stories uh while we are doing this we'll also read plays we'll also read short scripts we'll also read uh one act plays uh, with each of these class participants as the characters um and we'll understand how and what it was when the other person was reading and try and dissect these scripts yeah uh, when i say dissect i mean we'll we'll go deep into what the subtext is what the text is what is the final objective of these characters what is their motivation and so on and so forth um after this we'll have the third section of the pres- of of our sessions of our classes where we will have you have you write your first assignment which is writing your own story and then performing it uh we'll explore the idea of what it is to perform a play what it is to to make these lines that somebody else has written in somewhere some some random part of the country the world make your own how do you step into a character and tell a story uh and and once this is done we'll make three different assignments from what you've learned from these sessions uh, one will be writing your own story one will be performing your own story one will be recording your own story we will also try and explore and understand different aspects of of telling a story with your own body which means how do you improvise how do you use your voice to tell your story better how do you use your physicality to act better uh, and and by doing all of this we'll read as many plays as we can so the sessions are usually super fun it's not uh, uh, it's even though it is us trying to decode and understand literature and 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 uh, interesting plays from different authors and playwrights around the world we try and keep it fun and uh, and uh, yeah that's all that's the session that's the that's the theater module for you all thank you sir is there any questions if there's any questions feel free to reach out um and no sir my students are not uh, no yeah no okay Thanks a lot sir for your presentation. Yes. Thank you.